Welcome back family, AVS here, and I pray you're having a beautiful day. Today we're going to be discussing this absolute abomination right here. Now, do you notice what this looks like? Or what they are trying to make it look like at least? Yep, the third temple. And we're going to get deeper into what is written on this abomination in a minute. But for those of you who don't know exactly what this is, this is Jay-Z's new exhibition. And he calls it The Book of Hove. And it is set to light up Brooklyn and the hearts of hip-hop fans, right? It's always, always blasphemous. First of all, he calls himself Hove, which is a play on word for Jehovah. Now, that is what many believe the name of the Most High to be. Of course, it's actually not. It's Yahawa. But either way, it doesn't matter because his intention is to call himself that. And that's the point here. Now, when you actually read what is written on this abomination, you see very clearly who his God is. And it is that thing right there. Now, for those of you who have discernment and are filled with the Ruach Kakudesh, the Holy Spirit, you will know that that is Satan. That is the one who denies Christ. That is the one who denies the crucifixion and the resurrection. That is the one who denies that Christ is the son of Elohim, which means that is the Antichrist spirit and Satan himself. Now, something that I want to point out on this is that clearly there is some politics being promoted. They also have idolatry on the two pillars. If you know what the two pillars represent in their world, then you know. And for those of you who don't believe me that he actually calls himself Hove, as in Jehovah, he literally says right here, Hove, all right, all right, American gangster, gangster business, like I'm white. So he's clearly calling himself Hove. And anyone who knows about hip hop or any form of rap, you know that Jay-Z calls himself Hove. Um, as a play on word for Jehovah. And before we move on, I would like to point out something very, very specific. They have idols on the pillars, and these idols are their gods. Lowercase g. They serve these entities. Sodom, Egypt, Babylon. That is what they represent, and that is what they promote. Now, I want to show you something very, very interesting in how they word the promotion of this so-called exhibition. They say, we are proud to celebrate his mastery of music. Now, who was the master of music? Who was the one who fell and used music in heaven before he fell? Who was that? Satan. Oh, but it gets worse. Poetry. The written word. What is the written word? Well, that would be the Holy Bible and the oral tradition. What would that be? That would be all of the traditions that are handed down that are not specifically written in the Bible. So they are clearly trying to compare this exhibition to the creator and blaspheme him by comparing his word and his traditions with their words and their traditions. And they say, and we hope the exhibition will inspire visitors to bet on themselves and pursue their own dreams okay musical or otherwise so this is not to point to the most high yahweh this is to point to self and what does satan want to do he wants to create prideful beings who look to themselves that is exactly what the occult is that is exactly what satanism is it is self-worship okay taking the worship and the attention away from the most high and placing it on self on your own desires on your own dreams on your own goals that are contrary to the will of the most high now, the reason why he has called it the Book of Ho is also to take another shot at the Most High Yahweh. And how is he doing that? Well, we pointed it out earlier. Hov is a play on word for Jehovah, which he believes to be the name of the Most High. So even though he got the name of the Most High wrong, he is still intentionally trying to compare himself to the Most High and claim that this book that he has written or he is promoting is actually, well, the truth. And claiming that this book, the Book of Hov, his book is comparable to the Holy Bible. And we know that because they call it the written word and the oral tradition is very, very manipulative the way that they have worded these articles and these promotions. But I also want to point something very specific out. And this may be a touchy subject, but they are placing this in the Brooklyn Public Library. And they always try to reach a certain community. And there's a reason for that, because there are certain communities that are easily influenced and lean on emotions very, very quickly and quite frequently. And they want to keep those type of people in a frame of mind 
where they are continually chasing a dream instead of the truth. So wake up if that's you. Don't fall for the pride. Don't fall for the self-worship. Now I want to move on now and show you that they always hold up this symbol at their concerts and this is what they represent. It is the triangle and they put their eye through this triangle the same symbol that you actually see on your money in America. Why do you think that is? Because the lowercase god of this world is controlling you. And the eye that is in the middle of the triangle normally is the so-called all-seeing eye, which is not. It doesn't really see everything. It just wants to because Satan wants to exalt himself above the Most High Yah. He wants to ascend above the Most High Yah, but he cannot because he is fallen. Now, be very careful, family, because the manipulation gets even deeper. And those who have eyes to see, see. Look at this. Look at it. They have the idols on the door. They have a very specific layout of this building. And if you want to know what that is, well, take a look at what the third temple is going to apparently look like when they build it in Israel, where the Antichrist is going to sit and declare himself to be God. Now, what spirit is operating through Jay-Z? Well, the spirit that claims to be God. The same spirit that wants to exalt itself above God. The same spirit that wants to claim that he is Hove. Mm -hmm. Sound suspicious? Certainly. Now, this third temple may not look exactly this way, but this is a rough idea of what they want it to look like. And clearly, they have tried to imitate it with the Book of Hove over here. But it gets even deeper. What exactly is surrounding Jay-Z at this point in time? August the 28th, 2023, this article was written and it is speaking about a new movie that is coming out and Jay-Z plays a massive part in the production of this movie. He is somebody who is heavily involved and he hasn't posted on his Instagram profile for years, but the first post he promotes after years of just being silent on there is this. Now, if you know how influential somebody is, who has millions of followers on Instagram, then you know how much of a big deal it is to make a post after years of silence. That is a statement. And what is this movie about? Well, let's take a look. It is about the times of Christ, okay? But from the perspective of the person who makes sandals, apparently, and a hairstylist. Now, if you think that this is really going to represent the biblical narrative accurately, you need to, well, Think again, because it certainly is not, and that is by their own confession. Take a look at what is written here. In the book of Clarence, Clarence is hustling to make ends meet, biting big on a chariot race he partakes in, and dealing whatever they called hallucinogens back then. So, he's a drug dealer in the times of Christ. And it says, he's impressed by the power and influence the twelve apostles have, and soon decides he wants to join their ranks even though he doesn't exactly believe Jesus is the Messiah. So he's a non-believer drug dealer who is living at the time of Christ. There are 12 apostles that he is impressed by and he wants to join their ranks. Why? Because of their influence. But he himself doesn't believe in the Messiah. Sound like a narrative that you want to be part of? Not really. Clarence is a person that doesn't believe in anything outside of what's in front of him, what he can see and hear. Now remember, when a movie is produced, the people watching the movie naturally are inclined to relate to the main character. And when there are very, very professional directors, talented directors and story writers, script writers, they are able to sway emotions of the viewers, of the audience, and make people want to relate to the main character. They even do this in villain movies now. They have twisted the narratives of movies that came out years ago, and they have taken the villain and they have made movies from their perspective, and people start to like the villain. Why do you think that is? Even though the villain is wicked and evil, well, it's because the way that the movies are filmed, the way they are directed, the way that the scripts are written, emotional manipulation, and do you really think that this movie is not going to use those kind of techniques? I highly doubt it. They are definitely going to want the audience to relate to Clarence and not to Christ. Now, let's keep reading. It says, Clarence has a lot of inside belief. He has a lot of inside confidence. This man is sure he could fly. He reminds me of me growing up. But unlike me, he has no outside faith. I think it's just a really interesting vantage point to explore living in that particular time and place where most everyone around him is speaking about the Messiah. 
Now it goes on to say, the book of Clarence has some deep cut references to biblical characters and storylines that even a moderately well-versed Christian might not be aware of. Samuel says he didn't have to do much research on the actual Bible stories. So this is a man writing a movie about living in the times of Christ, but he says he didn't have to do much research about the Bible stories. Really? Okay. Just being black, you grew up in a house where you go to church on Sundays. So he thinks that this is going to be enough information to create an accurate representation of ancient Israel and the biblical narrative? Definitely not. He says, I think if you grew up in the hood, you are inundated with Bible studies. He did, however, do research on the more minuscule aspects of everyday life during that time, like what sort of currency they used or where people would get their hair done. You see, family, this is an absolute mockery, genuinely. And I hope that you can see how much of a mockery this is. This is not to promote Christ. This is to promote a lifestyle. This is to promote a certain way of thinking. Now, let's get on to Jay-Z. As a producer, Jay-Z says he was most concerned that those who hear about the film and its premise might immediately just focus on the religious aspect of it and not the human story. You see, family? This is not to promote the religious aspect, as they say, but the human story is to focus on the flesh, not on the spirit. He says, though Clarence may be full of doubt about the Messiah in the beginning, he's forced to find his faith as the story moves on. The film doesn't make fun of religion or the biblical stories, but rather attempts to expand the world. My fear is that people don't allow the ark to take place and are immediately judging says Jay-Z. He notes he's been on calls with studio execs where someone will accidentally call it a faith-based movie. You see, family? So this is not a faith-based movie because he said it was an accident that they called it a faith-based movie. But faith is only a backdrop. So the focus is on the human story. You have to learn to be able to highlight key words and key statements that are brought up because that is how you understand what is actually being said. These people speak in very, very serpent-like ways, to be truthful. They say one thing and then they try to disguise that thing by saying people immediately judged. And because people always want to come across as liked, they will be like, no, no, I'm not judging, I'm not judging. And they take their guard down and they stop judging. But Yahweh told us to judge righteously. We are to judge. We are to make sure that nobody is being deceived. Remember, take heed that no man deceives you. Okay, so learn to read between the lines, family. But faith is only a backdrop, he says. This story is about a young man who finds his faith through love and through wanting to become somebody in the world, which is the story of everybody. You see, family, there's the narrative right there. Everyone wants to find love and everyone wants to leave this place having accomplished something, having left their mark that they've been here and hopefully affected the world in a positive way. Now, family, that looks like a very good thing on the surface level, but that is not the goal that Yahweh wants you to achieve. He wants you to find the truth. He doesn't want you to leave your mark. He wants you to point to Christ who already did everything for you and he is the way, the truth and the life. He wants people to not point to themselves. He definitely wants you to do positive things. He definitely wants you to accomplish something, but that something is point to the one who has already accomplished everything for everyone. You cannot complete everybody's destiny, but Christ has already done so and it is a choice, him or hell. So point to Christ, not to yourself. These movies are pointing to humanity, not to divinity. And that has to be highlighted very, very severely. Now, did you catch what community they are targeting? They are marketing this movie for? Yeah, family, don't put your guard down just because the characters are relatable. Don't put your guard down just because you are entertained. Now, family, every movie that has ever promoted a faith-based narrative as a backdrop, but not the actual focus, so in other words, they haven't accurately represented the biblical narrative, but just used it as a backdrop. It has always come across as a mockery. For example, The Life of Brian. Um, I haven't actually checked this movie, but every atheist in my family uses this movie to mock Jesus Christ. They always ask me, oh, have you watched that movie? Have you watched that movie yet? Because they know that it is a mockery of the truth and their heart is hardened towards truth. And that is exactly what they want. 
They want to create more mockery in this world. Remember, there will be mockers and scoffers seeking after their own lusts. Now, let's keep on going. I want to point out something even deeper, right? We know that his wife is Beyonce. And look what she says in her song, Denial, Lemonade Poem Part 2. She said, She saw the devil. She grew thickened skin on her feet. She bathed in bleach and plugged her menses with the pages from the holy book. Now, she's talking about the Bible. And for those of you who don't know what this actually means, maybe there's some young viewers in here. Basically, she is claiming that she puts the pages of the Bible inside her private parts when she is on her period. That is how disgustingly disrespectful she is. And that is Jay-Z's wife. Now, Jay-Z also hangs around with this lady right here. Her name is Marina Abramovic. And what does she do? Well, she actually does something called spirit cooking, right? where she gets blood and she writes things on the walls. She openly confesses to be a witch and she even has a guide to spirit cooking. And she says that somebody should get milk from their breasts and mix it with that. And do you know what? We're not going to read it because it's absolutely an abomination. But this is the type of person that Jay-Z hangs around. And he actually had a very strange interaction with her where he was basically dancing with her in a room. Um, yeah, that was very strange. And that was part of some quote-unquote artistic exhibition as well. So please, be aware of what is taking place. What is being represented? So let me know what you think about this entire situation in the comment section below. Now, ultimately, they are targeting any mind that has bought into culture over truth. So be careful. Be very careful. We are getting very close to the return of the Messiah. And Christ said very clearly, Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't let any man deceive you, family. Make sure that you are grounded on Christ. Take a look in Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, Christ is that rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So make sure you have built your house upon Christ. You have not built your house upon the world. Because if you are not truly in Christ, if you have not believed in the true gospel, if you are not born again, then you are simply lukewarm. You're just tasting, but you have not actually drunk. You must drink. You must be filled with living water. You must drink of the water that makes you never thirst. You must be born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you will be vomited out of the Most High's mouth. If you are deceiving yourself, simply claiming, oh yeah, 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 I, I believe, but then you're not really believing in the true gospel, you're still trusting in your works, you're still basically unsaved, then, or should I say literally unsaved, you're condemned already because you have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God as John 3.16 states. You're a hearer of the word, but not a doer. And if you're wondering, what do you have to do? What are you supposed to be doing to do the work of God? Well, Christ told you very clearly, and it's very simple. Look, John 6, 28 to 30. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore, they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Now, we know that he died and he rose from the dead, but they were asking before that happened. And Christ is saying very clearly, you have to believe in me. You have to believe in Christ. You have to believe in what he did. He died, his blood was shed, and he rose on the third day. You have to put your trust in him. Trust Christ for your salvation. Not your own works, not your own doings. Take a look. Ephesians 1.7 in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. And in Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace, you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So it is not of yourselves. You can't do anything for your salvation. You believe on Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, that he died, his blood was shed and he rose on the third day. And you are sealed by the Holy Spirit once you are born again. Don't trust in yourself. Don't be lukewarm. You'll be vomited out of the Most High's mouth, okay? Trust fully in Christ. 
He is your savior. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And what the world wants to do is to point to anything but the true Messiah. They want to point to anything that is false. They will even tell you false versions of Christ's. They'll say, oh yeah, yeah, Christ was real, but he wasn't crucified. Oh, Christ was real, but he wasn't the son of God. Oh, Christ was real, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, everybody knows Christ was real because he literally is a factual historical figure. You can read about him in history. He is 100% a real person. Everybody knows that. The people who deny that are literally just absolute foolishness and delusion. But the point is, he didn't only exist. He literally is the word who became flesh. He literally is the Messiah, the son of God. He literally is Elohim in the flesh. So there you go, family. I'm going to leave it at that. But make sure if you haven't already subscribed, you do subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. It really does help me out. It lets YouTube know that this is content that you're enjoying and they will push it out to more Christians, to more people, so that more people can hear the truth and be saved. All glory to the Most High Yah. And feel free to share this video with your friends and family. It helps the channel out greatly. If you want to take your support that step further, consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Saint AVS or click that join button. Other than that, family, I pray the Most High Yah shines his face upon you always and gives you peace. And I'll see you on the next one. Shalom, shalom.